going on, Doombots? Tony's Congealy here with a beginner explanation of who to farm, right? This is uh, got to be covered by one or two disclaimers. First, I do not have all the answers. I want to have all the answers. I will strive to have all the answers. I'm trying to have all the answers, but I don't right now. Uh, all I have is information and opinion. Right, so I've gathered information and I've gathered a bunch of opinions and I've heard everyone out and now I've come up with what I consider to be the best advice for the early game, not because it's 100% the best way to the top, not because everybody who does this is going to immediately be a hero, but because it's what makes the most sense to me starting this game it's what i intend on doing even as someone willing to spend a little bit a lot of money so we're going to start off with who do you start farming now i would add infographics to this but like who cares i'm sure someone has that already uh and i am working on a priority list for characters and teams not a tier list per se but that's it but here's the the core the stone skinny the end of the day here's what you need to know at least as far as i'm concerned you have a farming priority that I will put right here. Uh, it consists of orcs, humans, demons, pandas, goblins, elves, and pride. That is the clans, the order you're going to farm. Now, I've left out half pigs and dwarves because they're so new, we literally don't have any information about them yet, how they work, what's going to take, blah, blah, blah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, right? Whatever. But I do believe, again, orcs, humans, demons, pandas, goblins, elves, and pride are the uh, clans or the groups that you want to work up as a team first. And I have some very important reasoning for this, and I'd like to get into it. First, we're going to start with why orcs first. Uh, the very simple reason about why orcs first is they are very easy to come by in the early game. Uh, they are a very fundamentally strong team even into the late game, even though there are some orcs that are harder to come by, Zera, Hard Orc, Mordoom, um, Zalinar, we don't talk about these Diesel Rock, you can use these characters from a very early time and accomplish a lot of the in-game stuff, as well as stuff like Tower, uh, and of course, PvP. So, orcs are one of the best starting teams in the game, because you need them, they're there, it's very reasonable to use them. You want to work on these characters as quickly as you can to build up to unlock the human legendary. The human legendary, Soleus, uh, is good as a legendary character, is good on the human's team, and has a lot of value outside of it. So that's kind of why we're starting with orcs at the exact same time, because when you start the game, you also need a decent number of hero characters or order characters. I suggest humans, and for the exact same reason, if you're working on orcs who unlock the humans legendary, as it turns out, humans unlock the orc legendary. Now, the orc legendary is a little bit harder to come by, it's about 7 star unlock, so you need 330 shards, you're gonna need a lot of work for it, but because you already start with humans like Darien, because you have access to characters like Robin Bad and Selina, even though I don't recommend them, uh, the overall humans team, characters like Freezard, Eric, Snorri, Lil Batty, Garrett, and for some players who are willing to spend a little bit of money in the early game, Cruel, you can get a lot of uh, like early game stuff done uh, and work on these characters to progress to the highest star. Keep in mind, these are the first two teams in the game. Some of them have really good endgame value. Some of them are a little bit worse. But ultimately, these guys feed each other. At the end of doing both of these things, you will have two legendaries. Now, when you are done with humans and orcs, once you've unlocked Solius and Mordoom, boop, boop, because they unlock each other, that's where things get a little bit more open. You're going to hear people say, well, the best legendary in the game is Thelane, so you need goblins. You're going to hear, well, this team can't function without this character, so you need buff, you know, work on pride. You're going to hear a bunch of different stuff. So I will just tell you everything off the top. Um, I think that you have whatever path you like. The path that makes the most sense to me, as we've talked about before, would be going demons next. This is relatively simple. One, 
demons are strong. Demon, the weakest demon character is Puncherface, and he's pretty good. You know, like he's not bad. Like you don't have to ignore him. You could still use him. The demon team fundamentally is very strong. As a matter of fact, some of the demons are order, some of the demons are are clans. You can actually kind of like split them out and use them in different spots. But they're strong on their own, and the uh, end result of the demon team or having a seven star demon team is your ability to unlock the goblin legendary the goblin legendary is general murdoch and arguably your goblins aren't going to do too well without him so just remember if you work on demons next you'll have the team capable of unlocking the goblin legendary so after demons most people would say but tony why wouldn't you go to goblins you've already done that well a couple reasons the first reason is because the goblins suck comparatively they suck without him um you will eventually get them um they're not strong enough without him to unlock Thelian, the elf legendary uh i mean sure you can unlock her maybe but you're really gonna be a little bit far behind on that and again that's really depends on you if you'd like to just rush to getting the character unlocked and then worry about more stars later that's up to you. I recommend getting teams to seven star as quickly as possible. This way your roster doesn't go too wide and you don't end up getting beaten by somebody who's doing the same thing as you, but building a little bit taller. Building a little bit taller than wider, especially as you're progressing through, is going to help you in the early game. And then as you spread out in the mid and late game, you'll be able to accomplish more tasks, do more in tournaments. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a marathon, not a race. So we're not a sprint. Marathons are races. So that's it. So instead of going goblins next, I recommend going pandas. And the reason is the exact same as demons. Pandas, especially with characters like Master Duo and Patriarch Key, are a strong team. They're actually really good in battlegrounds. Uh, they have a, a lot of different tags on them. Fighter, Ranger, Traveler. Fighter, Warrior. Boop. Oh, wait. Fighter, Warrior, Gladiator. You're getting a lot of tag, Healer, Leader. You're getting a lot of tags out of these characters, and these tags are going to help you complete a lot of extra tasks, as well as being a fundamentally strong team. Clearly, not as strong as when you unlock their Legendary. However, that doesn't seem to make too much of a difference. So, I would say Demons, number three. Pandas, number four. And the reason behind that is you very rarely are going to work on just one team at a time. You'll probably reach a point where you can't work on so-and-so, but you can work on this. So even if you are willing to spend more money or more resources or more time playing the game, you can work on different types of teams at once. But in general, I would work on Pandas next. Pandas will give you the most value for your roster as you build them up and set you up for the next unlock, which would be Goblins. Again, I've already said it. Goblins are kind of doo-doo poopy. Um, Adam ain't great. Vanessa used to be great, and now she's like, okay, slash good. Uh, I don't know. Vanessa's weird. Uh, old lore is questionable. Amara sometimes is great and sometimes isn't. Major Shot and Sergeant Pingwald are good, but ultimately none of them are, like, incredible. Like You probably will get a little bit more value with Major Shot, but not for anything that makes a difference. Once you unlock Murdoch, you're gonna absolutely crush raids like murdoch is insane and just him makes this entire team better and while that might make some players target rush him you're gonna lose a lot of early game value and you're gonna trade it for what you think is end game value but ultimately you're still gonna be behind because you're not gonna have a, uh, enough options of teams or enough powerful characters compared to other people that when you are trying to catch up with them you might be ahead for like a month or two but after the catch-up happens they're going to be way better because they've built the right amount of teams they can gain more resources from events and tournaments than you sure you might get some more dray coins but if dray coins were everything they'd be the only thing they gave us so I do like building the goblins out with Murdoch. I do like the fact that Murdoch unlocks uh, Thelane, uh, which is the next pool, by the way, after you finish goblins. 
you would go towards Elaine, who's unlocked by the goblins. Also because elves suck. All of them suck. Now, you can make an independent argument for Nightiel, Faella, Titania. These are characters that are independently good. And sure, if you get them all, that's fine. At this point in the game, after you've unlocked this many legendaries, we're not talking about years. We're talking about a couple of months it takes to build these characters up. And honestly, most of the events, they don't come around all that often. So we're talking about it takes about three months to get the ball rolling. And then the next time you see that legendary uh, event come up, you're going to have it. So you're built around to start the game. And then six months after you start the game, have everything uh, unlocked if you follow this kind of path. And it could take a little bit more, a little bit less based on timing. You really can't control that. But ultimately, it's not unreasonable. Uh, so I think elves suck. And then uh, they become better as you gain access to things like Titania, Faella, Wonder Lulu, and Thalane. Uh, even Delman's pretty okay. But like Kelrian, Senjiel, and Illyria are terrible. Sharp is okay. Nightiel is phenomenal. She's so good, she works better on a human's team than she does on an elf team. But that's kind of the point. If you work through the way I've just said, you should be okay. And last but not least, you get to use the elves to uh, uh, unlock the Pride legendary. And uh, Pride is an example of a team that doesn't actually need their legendary. Um, they have good leadership between Hera and Revel. Uh, they are a reasonable team in the early game. They actually do have a lot of splash value, certain characters, even though Voyron sucks. He has a little bit of value with like certain poison characters. Uh, Kagi kind of sucks, but they get a little bit of value. Some characters have a lot of turn rewind, and it's not going to be easy for you to have access to characters like Boreas uh, or Wukong, who's brand new early in the game unless you're spending a ton of money, at which point, if you do everything I say, you'll still be better than anyone who isn't, but you'll do it faster. So uh, you'll get access to Renara, and Renara is a healer that the Pride team doesn't actually need that much, uh, but she is very good. The final team to finish is the Pride, because the final team, being Pride, kind of needs Renara in order to unlock the last Legendary. The last Legendary, we're going all the way back, it's demons. The last legendary you can unlock in this game uses pride and uh, unlocks buff. And uh, if you look at the top of any arena shard or anything, you're going to see that buff is dope. Buff is really good. Uh, buff is great. Buff's great as a raid character. Buff's great as a solo character. He's great in battlegrounds. Uh, he does your dishes. Uh, so Buff is probably one of the top characters in the game. Not, maybe not the best, but you know, you can make an argument, I'm sure. Uh, he gets used everywhere. Most teams I see at, at endgame are using Thalane, Buff, and then three randos uh, from a small pool. So, yes, I understand in the mind of some people, you know, rushing to the best characters is the, is the best way to play. And if this game was based exclusively on a 1v1 strategy where the person with the best characters wins, yeah, that would be right. This is not this game. This is actually not a lot of games. Most games don't function that way. It's about the person who has the most options, the most reasonable options, the person who spends their resources correctly. So that's why one last... Stop. One last time. Orcs, humans, demons, pandas, goblins, elves, pride is the target farm priority. Feel free to, you know, move or shake depending on where you are in the game. If you happen to get lucky with some pulls and you realize, hey, I could do pandas before demons, like by all means do so. If you recognize that maybe, just maybe, uh, you got lucky with a lot of goblin pools and because of it, you can unlock an early Thalane, like go ahead and do that. That might help you build a reasonable team for arena. There are plenty of sub options in here, but that's my advice for uh, how to farm teams uh, up to seven star to unlock the legendary and move on. Um, do me a favor, comment below, and let me know why you think I'm wrong. Uh, I won't respond to it, because I don't. Uh, and I've seen enough of other opinions on this that most of them can at very least say it's somewhere in the middle. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck farming your characters. 
Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. And keep your eye out for the priority list that I'll be releasing soon. This way you can get a good idea of, of which characters are the best to work on for not just their teams, but for overall game usage. Uh, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.